All right. So the party has achieved a long rest and level five at the Elf Song Tavern. Um, a few things, interesting things happened in the night, but everybody got a good night's sleep. The, uh, the coming day will bring an invasion of the Van Tampur Manor, Van Tampur Villa. And it is compounded by the fact that they seem to know that you're coming and they may have also taken some of the people in the city who are important to you. So dawn comes. Rim will uh, knock on your door and uh, greet you with a cup of coffee from the tavern below. Oh, and there is no greater expression of <laughs> friendly love than that. And she goes, oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> Are you ready? Shall we go? I'm ready. Do you have the crystal, not pig. The, the crystal, crystal owl, owl, the size owl. of a pig. The size of a pig, yes. Mm -hmm. It's D&D, &D. it's an owl pig. It's an owl <laughs> pig, named Hawk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we are, we're ready to go. All right, let's do this. So you step out of the Elf Song Tavern and the air is heavy with just some sort of impending weather. Um, you can hear, you're fairly close to the docks from where you are. In fact, there's docks all along the lower city um, and you hear various bells being rung. It sounds like uh, various ships and shipping crews and all that are preparing for a large storm. It's not present yet. The sun is dawning, and it's red, blood red. And there's a heavy heat. Like red in the morning, sailors take warning, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, do we see those stupid crows that have been following us around? Uh, make a perception check. <laughs> Let's see. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's still a little. The light hasn't fully reached Baldur's Gate. Um, the sun is is low, and so there's quite a few shadows. From what you can see, no crows, but there could very well be hiding in the shadows. Uh, keep an eye out for those crows, imps, whatever they are. Uh, I'm sick of them catching us exactly when we don't want them to. Where are you heading? Uh, we're going to the Bowyer. The Bowyer. So the Quivering Shot is the name of this Bowyer. Uh, the name of the, uh, the artisan is Alden Teals. When you've seen him before, Samus, he's a half-elf, uh, uh, dark red hair, curly, but slick back, um, very fastidious, um, clean, nicely dressed, keeps a very, very pristine shop. When you were in it before, it smelled like um, freshly cut wood, um, some sort of musty uh, animal smell as well. Um, and you know that it is close to the Basilisk Gate, which is where you all first began this particular adventure. But reaching it, you see that once again, it is closed. Uh, now, it is early, but it's apparent, even just walking up to it, that this shop has been closed for at least a couple of weeks. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to look into the window and see what is it that I see from, uh, from the window. Um, no perception check needed. Uh, this, this shop has been cleared out. There's nothing. There are no uh, bows. There's no arrows. It's a completely empty shop. shop. Uh, is the door locked? Um, Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Does it kind of seem like a, like a, it's locked, but it's flimsy? Rim's a big guy. <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, wait. Uh, oh. Are you about to break it open? I was thinking about it. Do you have... Uh... Yes. So uh, I kind of friend read your mind that you're going to do that. And I walk maybe like 20 feet over and I start to play my lute and sing a song. Oh, Hopefully nice. to distract anybody. Mm, make a performance check. 
23. Hmm. If I had rolled well, poorly, you, I was going to say it's very early in the morning. And yeah, I that's right. Up yet. <laughs> you, you, <clears throat> and you bring it out. You bring out the big guns first thing in the morning, like an early morning audition. And uh, there are a few people, you know, some people hurrying to take care of things before the storm, people walking by. Um, there are quite a few um, refugees just sort of hanging out in this area. Um, you remember this is a kind of a, a, a hotbed of activity because of people trying to get out and also people trying to get into the city. It's still closed. Um, but you are creating a very effective distraction. Um, you put out your hat and even a couple of people throw a couple of coins in, a couple of coppers as oh. you are, as you're performing. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> Make that money. And, um. uh, and Samus, you, uh, uh, Rim, you have a, uh, an opportunity to open this door if you wish. Yes, I don't want to obliterate the door. It's not. I don't. I don't want to uh, to blast it to kindling. But I do sure. kind of want to just give it one strong uh, elbow and just kind of sure muscle it open. Make a uh, make a strength. Make a roll twenty and add your strength modifier. All right. I have a uh, eleven with my strength modifier is a sixteen. Yeah, that's plenty. You you come. Up, you sort of lean into the door and <laughs> and it just <laughs> opens up. Very nice. nice. Um, I does uh, can Persephone see me do this? Yeah, she knew you were about to do it. I okay. would say, yeah, it's. I'll walk in and just leave the door ajar, uh, uh, an inch. Um, and I finish the song, not in any hurry. I just finish it from wherever I am and take a little bow and start to collect and look like I'm not like continuing. And does the crowd start to go away or like stop focusing on me? Right. You know, cool. you, you finish like mid song and everybody's like. <laughs> <laughs> you a couple ah. poppers, guys. It's not good enough. <laughs> um, and so I pack up and then I um, just without trying to be super sneaky, but certainly not trying to make uh, a big deal about it. I just walk in as if the shop's open and close the door. Very good. Um, Rim and Persephone, you again, are, it's remarkable. There's nothing of value in this shop, but it is clear that somebody took great pains to clean it and make it just, well, everything has been, you know, there's a, there's a thin layer of dust, but there's no clutter. There's no evidence of anybody having been in here anytime recently. Um, and you can still smell the uh, smell of cut wood and that musky animal smell. Hmm. There's this. only one level to this store. Okay. Um, does it look like there are any escape hatches, trap doors? Uh, Make a perception check. Uh, that is a dirty 20. A dirty 20. Um, uh, what you see is what you get. There, uh, there are a few cabinets that look like they would have held supplies at some point, but there's nothing. This is an empty, empty building. Hmm. And you hear the door open. You turn around and you see a very, very old uh, female uh, dwarf. She's kind of fat and she's got, she's got an eye like that. And she says, oh, you won't be finding anybody here. Go out and he ran afoul of the guild, you know. Hmm. Do you know where Alden is? I imagine he's at his house. Where's where that? Is that? Hmm. Where well, indeed? I give her the coppers that I made from singing. Maybe that will help jog your memory. Mm. Make a persu uh, persuasion check. Twenty, dirty twenty. Oh, that's not very much money, is it? But you remind me of my granddaughter. So I'll tell you, it is not far, just a few houses over. Haven't seen him here in weeks. Mm. Had, uh, ran into some problems with money, bad gambling debts or something I heard. And uh, well, they came and, and they told him to leave. They took all his stuff. Left it nice and clean though, didn't they? The guild took all of his things? Hmm. That's that's the that's the guild. 
I'm, I'm trying to wink, but I've got a problem with my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Hmm. Thank you for your help. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you're a big one, aren't you? So Why are you going. here? Oh, I saw you go in. Fair enough. Well, you know, it's a nice building. As long as no one's using it, might, uh, might stay here myself. Couldn't get in the door. Well, not a problem now, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> that well, seems fair to me. Enjoy the space. Mm. I am. All right. Shall we, uh, shall we head over to Alden's? Mm-hmm. All right. So she points it out. She's right over there. And there's a uh, just an apartment that a, a, looks like it's above uh, some sort of coffee shop. Yeah, more coffee. That sounds Next, like a very more good of a tea idea. Shop. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the entrance to the apartment readily apparent? Is it? Yeah, there's back? a door. Okay. Uh, Does there seem to be a back door? If hmm. we just do a little circle around. Um, there is not a back door, but you do see windows. Okay. It, this is a, so the front door, you open it and it goes up some steps and there's a couple of different sort of apartment looking from the outside. You can see that, oh, that's probably an apartment. That's probably an apartment sort of thing. This looks like cool. one entrance services several different abodes. Mm. Um. Scaling to the window uh, would probably be, there'd probably no way to do that subtly or. Uh... Uh, yeah. I mean, with another, with a proper distraction, it could probably be done, but. Um, I could try. I just want to make sure he's home before we start barging in. I think that's fair. So um, I'll walk. So it's a kind of weird to do. do where you are. So you're like off the street now. You're in the back alley. So um, if there's we're not in the back many, alley. Yeah, there's not yeah. many people around here. There are a few. So maybe I could just, uh, well, I'll just. I actually, I'm not, I'm, I'm not too terribly worried about drawing attention. I think I can just. Uh, okay. Climb I'll stand. And... I'll stand watch. Yes. <laughs> right. just... So you, you do see, I mean, Rim cuts, cuts quite a figure. There, there are a few people, you know, not ne'er do wells sort of sleeping off hangovers, um, lurking people um, in the back. Um, if you want someone to not have seen you, that can probably be arranged. Meh. No, I think I, I, at this point, I just want to make sure that he's there. So I'll, I, I don't need to hide that action. All right. I'll climb and, and take a look into the window. Um, All right. I, I guess I'll, could I ready an action of minor illusion to cover him with like a facade of the house? If somebody goes like, Hey, look, that might be a good thing to do normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. But, yeah. So I'm ready to do that. If I right. see somebody. Rim out. starts to climb just bear claw climb the back of this thing. And you do see a couple of people go. I just. <laughs> and it seems to have done the trick. <laughs> so Rim, you are climbing under the cover of illusion. Oh, very nice. Uh, what do I see in the window? Um, a very messy apartment. Um, looks like clothes. Um, uh, Furniture, half-eaten plates of food, um, and there is a sort of a couch, quasi bed thing, and sleeping on it, with a jug in his hand on the floor, looking very unkempt and unshaven, is who you assume to be Alden Teals. All right, um, is the window open? Can I can I lift it? It doesn't look like a window that was ever meant to open. It's just, it's just a piece of glass. Ah, I see. All right. Um, I, I do will... like the image of you just like Kool Aid Manning in. And you could get you could <laughs> get right. in the window, no problem. <laughs> but you would. It, it's not like opening. You would you would make it a window that it could be opened, but not closed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I uh, I don't want to do. It sounds. I don't want to kick a man when he's down. I don't want to destroy property for the sake of destroying property. Um. Uh, I'll climb down and I will give a very strong knock on the door. All right. 
So you go back around the front, you open the door, you climb the steps, you go to the apartment that has been pointed out to be his. <laughs> do, 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 do. Nothing. I'll say, uh, I'll call into the apartment. Alden, it is not the guild. It's the dragonborn whose bow you have. We just want to talk. We're coming in whether you let us in or not, so. (laughs) Who is it? Open the door. Give me a minute. You hear things kind of being shuffled around and moved. Hear something break. I just kind of look at Rim. I shrug my back. shoulders. <laughs> and you see he opens the door. And cries. He's like, who are you? You don't recognize me. <laughs> oh, it's you. It just steps away from the door. He's left it cracked, but he hasn't opened it. I want my bow. He's walked away from the door. So, oh, in we go. We'll follow yeah, okay. him. Push, Push the open. door open and shove the garbage behind it uh, off to the side. Um. Does it look like he has any of his implements or his uh, and anything from the store? Uh, in make the a perception park? check. All right. It's very messy. <laughs> um, Episode of Hoarders. Nine. That's with my... Uh, it's possible that there's stuff in here, but there's just... <laughs> it, it's There is some kind of organization to this mess that's, someone, that's an organization that only he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll go up to him and I'll, I'll say, what happened to you? <laughs> what happened to me? Well, funny, you should ask. See, a few months ago, this fellow comes in with design for a bow. Impossible. <laughs> I thought it was a joke. But... He paid good money, so I started working on it, and it worked. I mean, I couldn't pull it. No one could pull it, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Best thing I've ever made. My my father, my father taught me, but I, I was never able to make anything near as good as he. He's full elf, you understand, so... Nothing I could do could ever be as good. But this, this was something special. And I knew it as soon as it was done. And I figured if I could do that, I could I could make other things just as good, but I couldn't, right? I kept trying. But it was like all, all the skill I had went into this one fucking bow. I couldn't make anything else work. Nothing else was good enough. So I started to run out of money. And I, I went I went down to the tavern. I went into the into the wide, below the wide, the undercellar, and I, I found a couple of games, a couple more, and before I knew it, I lost everything. And they came and they took all my stuff. So, all because of this fucking bow. Hope you're happy. I'm very sorry. That's right. You don't have it, do you? I still have it. You do. (laughs) Well, off you go. You have some nerve blaming him for your predicament when you cheated him out of the bow in the first place. Yeah, well, I don't look at it that way. How do you look at what you've done to my friend here? Something that ruined my life. His life ruined? I don't think so. Looks fine to me. 
Well, it looks like you could use the money. We'll still pay you for the bow. It's not about money. It isn't. You have well, no profession. If you pay me money, I'll just have to give it to the guild. And I'll have we, nothing. What if we gave you something valuable and you could figure out where to store it until it's safe to sell it? You really want to help me out, huh? We want the bow. Why should I give it to you? I already paid for it. The reason that you made it in the first place was from my design. I'm sorry that this fell upon you, but obviously that was never my intention. To punish us for your mistake is incredibly unkind. Misplaced revenge. We're offering to pay you for something he already paid for. And if you're reasonable about it, perhaps we can tell anyone who ever asks where they could go if they ever needed something special. Make a persuasion check at advantage for seven. Excellent. All right. First one is 15. I rolled two 15s in a row. (laughs) So we're going with 15. (laughs) 15 is enough. He just sort of deflates as you speak. And he's like, I did it though. I made it. Can I see it? It's in another room. There are many makers creators, artists, who never make one special thing in their life. So it's a beautiful thing that you've done that. It is not now the bar which you have to surpass every time. I feel like as long as I can just keep looking at it, that I won't think it was a dream. Can I tell you a story about this bow and how it came to pass? I'm sure before, before you do that, let's, let's go get it. And so he goes to the other room and he brings out an amazing, an amazing bow. Um, we will link a picture to it. Um, but when we begin our next game, I'll show it. But it's this huge stands almost as tall as rim. It barely has enough uh, um, clearance so that when he stands and pulls it back, it's only like six inches above the ground. (laughs) And it is made with uh, hickory root and you sort of woven together to form a really hard laminate. It looks like you could use it as a staff, like a quarter staff just by itself. It's just huge things like that thick around. And it's got a curve on the top and the bottom that has, that has a uh, strings attached to it. And then it has another curve lower down that has strings attached to that so that you're actually pulling four strings when you pull it back. And the string itself is like that thick around. He pulls it, he hands it to Rim. Rim what? immediately begins to tear up. This is a very, uh, this is a very emotional moment for him. And um, Rim, you pull it back and you see Rim's muscles just <laughs> bulge as he pulls it back. And this thing, when he pulls it, creaks like a tree in a storm. Just I think, but don't say, well, he's not getting it back now, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Try and take it back. <laughs> He sees you pull it back. He's like, oh, I, I got to admit, I, it's beautiful to see it pulled finally. God, you're strong. This bow. My father and I designed this bow. He was an elf. Um, I look at Alden and uh, I look at him very intently as I tell this story. When I was seven, My father gave me my first bow. It was little more than a toy, but it was my prized possession for many years. And when he handed it to me, 
he pointed to the top of a massive tree and said, the boy whose arrow finds the top of that tree will have the makings of a master hunter. For months, I practiced with my bow. I fired hundreds and hundreds of arrows into the air, but I never came close to the target. But I was so desperate to prove myself to my father that after months of failure, I decided one night to climb the tree and put the arrow in by hand. It was a monstrous climb. I wasn't yet comfortable with heights, and I remember shaking as I ascended. My scales weren't hard yet, and I was cut repeatedly by the rough bark. But I finally managed to reach the top. I dug one of my arrows into the tree, and I returned to my cave. The next morning, my father woke me and said, Rim, is, is that your arrow in the top of that tree? Yes, father. And how did you manage to get it there? I... I shot the arrow with my fa with, the, with my bow, father. The moment the lie escaped my mouth, I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. Did you now? My father gave me an odd sort of smile. Well then, you are already a master hunter. Show me your skills. See that pheasant there, shoot it, and we shall have breakfast. So I drew my bow back, I shot, and I missed. Well, that's odd, he said. How about an easier target? That large rock. Strike the rock with your arrow for me. And I drew my bow back, shot, and missed again. And I began to cry. I'm so sorry, father. I lied to you. I climbed the tree last night and put the arrow in myself. I will never have the makings of a master hunter. And my father smiled at me and said, but you're wrong, Rim. Is that not your arrow in the tree? The bow in your hand doesn't have the range to hit that target. You knew this, came up with an alternative means to your goal. That shows wisdom. You braved a difficult climb and conquered your fear of heights. That shows courage. And the cuts in your hide tell me that you persevered despite adversity. That shows determination. Remember my words, the boy whose arrow finds the top of that tree will have the makings of a master hunter. And so you have. I thought about this for a moment, but then why was I unable to hit such simple targets just now? And my father looked at me with an intensity that I hadn't seen before and said, the weight of a guilty conscience can do more damage than the tip of your arrow, but it can also teach a great lesson. I've no doubt that you will grow up to be a master hunter, my son, it's more important to me that you become an honest one. I never lied to my father after that day. I hope that you take this lesson to heart in the future. That's a good story. I think, I think maybe your father and my father might have gotten along pretty well. There's one thing, though, about this bow. If you pull it all the way back, I mean, you're talking about some serious force. And a normal arrow will split apart. There's no way it has the strength to withstand that kind of, uh, that kind of force. So most of the pool, fine. You'll do amazing damage. All the way back, you're going to need something bigger. I think, I think this can could fire javelins. Actually, won't go as far, but whoa, you're going to seriously fuck someone up. Rim reaches into his cloak and produces the crystal owl. Promise me that you'll take this, rebuild your life and do good with it. I'll try. Listen, if you ever, if you ever make your way back, I'd love to see it again, just to know that it's still in good hands. Rim extends a claw to him and says, it's a promise. I'll do you one better. I'll see this thing in use for many adventures to come. 
The next time we see you, I'll give you the ballad that I've written about its deeds done in battle. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. It's, you know, I've never had any children of my own, but it's like giving away a child, you, you understand? Maybe, Maybe you do. How would you feel if I called the boat, Alden? Well, I don't know. That's just weird. <laughs> I, I appreciate the sentiment, but no, it needs it needs a stronger name than that, Alden. <laughs> it's like naming your sword Roger. <laughs> kind of weird, right? I mean, you name it whatever you want. I've been calling it the Sojourner's Bow. Just felt right, but no, it's yours to name. If it should be named after anyone, it sounds like it should be named after your father. I thought of that too. Or maybe some part of that story you just told. Well, I will do the bow of the honest hunter. I'll do my best to ensure that you can lay your hands on it once more. And Rim draws the bow back and looks at Alden's hand and asks and, and suggests that Alden put a hand on it. Um, as it's drawn back, so he can feel oh. the rim taut. <laughs> oh, man. If you put someone's head in between that, it, take it right off. Well, so let's not do that today. Oh, no. I, you know, just things you think about when you're working <laughs> on weapons. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's time to let it go, right? Time to let it go. Well, good luck to you, Dragonborn. To you as well, friend. Once you can leave the city, get out. Start somewhere new. <laughs> I'll never leave Baldur's Gate. Too much going on here. I get it. Well, I should really... I should really clean this place up. Hey, uh, uh, you have not seen me at my best. I apologize. Um, I'm going to use prestidigitation, which I got at level five, Ooh. and um, like do a, a sweep to like start it off. Like um, things are <laughs> just sort of remove the dirt. Yeah, just nice. to make it a little easier to start that project. That's very nice of you. His eyes widen as you start to cast the spell, and then he's like, that's useful. Right. Wow. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh, yes, if you, if you need anything, you find me at the Quivering Shot. I, uh, it's time to get back to work. I'm, I'm sorry for my behavior and thank you for this. I, it will help a lot. I assume. I mean, I've never seen anything like, where did you get this? It's a long story. My family is rich. <laughs> it's a short story. <laughs> nice. Well, Good luck. All done. Cheers. Uh, we exit his apartment and uh, Rim, you can see Rim holding the bow to his chest and there are tears streaming down his face. And he looks at you, Persephone, and he says, if we survive what lies before us, Persephone, I'm going to make the long journey back to the cave where I grew up. And with this bow, I will shoot an arrow into the top of that tree to thank my father for all he taught me. That will be a most magnificent moment and the perfect end to my ballad. And there's a massive crack of thunder. Let's get that shakes the, the city. Let's get back to the others quickly, shall we? Yeah, let's. So you head back to the Elf Song Tavern, not that far away from where you are. Perfect. And you encounter the rest of your group still stirring. Everyone's a little on edge planning for the day. <laughs> <laughs>